Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss some more difference in between owner's right stored procedure and caller's right stored procedure. Okay. So already in my previous video, I started discussion on this particular topic. I have explained using a simple experiment that what is the fundamental difference in between owner's right and caller's right stored procedure in Snowflake, right? So that particular concept will surely help you to understand today's topic in a much better way. If you know the concept or the difference in between owner's right and caller's right stored procedure, then well and good. But if you are not aware of that, I will request you to go through the link given in the description box first because those concepts will surely help you to understand today's discussion in a better way. Okay. So without any further delay, let's directly jump into understanding more differences in between owner's right and caller's right. So for this particular experiment, what I am doing first, I am dropping the Ramu database and here I am creating a fresh Ramu database for our experiment. So you will see that Ramu database is available. Inside this Ramu database, by default, there is information schema, which is containing all the metadata information. And there is public schema, which we can use to create different kinds of tables, views, stored procedures, etc, etc. Okay. Now here, what we are doing, like we did earlier. For understanding the working of caller's right, we need to create a caller. Caller is nothing but another user apart from the owner of the stored procedure, right? So for that, I am creating a analyst group, okay, which we will be assigning as role to the caller and the caller user name, suppose we are putting as data analyst. So for that experiment, first I am dropping the role and user if it is existing. Then here I am creating the fresh role. I am granting compute wh warehouse to this particular role so that caller can use this particular warehouse for different SQL queries. Okay. Then here I am creating the user data analyst with this particular password and then this role. And here I am granting this particular role to this user. Okay. These two queries I will execute. Okay. And all these codes I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section. No need to worry about a single line of code. Now here what we are doing. So whatever tables or stored procedures we will be creating, that we will be creating in the Ramu database public schema. So this access also need to provide to caller. So for that here, I am granting usage access to Ramu database and usage access to public schema of the Ramu database to the analyst group, which is basically belonging to this data analyst user. Okay, whatever we have created, right? So here I will execute both of them. So it is done. Now here I am creating a source table in the Ramu database public schema so that I can use this in our stored procedure if required. So here if I do, here six rows are inserted, dummy rows basically. And now here if I do select start, here you will see that six rows are there. Okay, cool. Now here first let us try to understand the difference in between caller's right and owner's right stored procedure in case of using session variables. Okay, right. So here what we will do, we will first set a session variable inside a snowflake stored procedure and then I, we will run that particular stored procedure which will make sure that the session variable is set and then we will try to access that particular session variable outside the snowflake stored procedure okay and we will see what difference we can observe in between caller's right and owner's right in this particular case so here is a simple code create or replace procedure ramu.public.set1 and here return string language javascript Currently, we are doing experiment with caller side stored procedure. So here we have written execute as caller, and here we are setting the session variable. We are executing them, and that's all. Okay. So here I will run this particular one, and then here what I will do? I will basically execute call ramu dot public dot set one. That is basically I am calling this particular stored procedure. When I am calling that, this set command will be executed. So outside the stored procedure, if I am executing select dollar session variable one. I should get the outcome as 5 because here already it is set right so here I will run that one and here see beautifully we are getting value 5 so this particular caller's right stored procedure is perfectly working as expected okay so here what we did we basically set a session variable inside snowflake stored procedure then we executed them so that this set command will work and then we tried to access outside stored procedure it worked fine now let's see the reverse way what we will do we will first set a session variable and we will try to access this particular session variable from inside stored procedure and we will see whether it is working or not. So here first we are setting employee number as 100 and then here what we are doing, we are basically executing a stored procedure where 
inside this load procedure we are using this SN variable just now what we set okay here we set the employee number and now here in this particular where clause here we are using that particular employee number okay so let me just show you if I execute this particular query outside the stored procedure so what output we should get we are getting output A why because here we are selecting employee name from this particular table where employee number is dollar employee number so employee number here we have configured as 100 so for employee number 100 what is the employee name it is A if you see here for this particular employee number 100 the employee name is A so basically this is what we should get from inside the stored procedure also so let's see that so here what I will do I will delete this one and first here I will execute this set command and then here I will basically create this particular stored procedure here this is with colors right stored procedure where we are trying to access already set snowflake session variable okay so here I will run this one and then here I will basically call this one okay when I am calling here perfectly I am getting A that means one thing you understood clearly that while working with session variable and colors right snowflake stored procedure if you are configuring session variable outside stored procedure and using that inside stored procedure then also it is working or else maybe you are configuring some session variable inside snowflake stored procedure and trying to access outside stored procedure that is also perfectly working okay now let's see what happens when we do the same kind of experiment with owner's right stored procedure okay so here i have created a very simple stored procedure where we are trying to set a session variable having the name session var 6 and that value we are trying to configure 5 okay and here this time it is owner side stored procedure so here we are trying to set a session variable inside snowflake stored procedure and we will try to access outside this stored procedure okay so with owner's right so i will execute this one and then here i will execute this call command when i'm executing see here we are getting error unsupported statement type set okay that means one thing you understood with owner's right stored procedure, you cannot set any session variable inside stored procedure. Okay, that is one thing. Now here, suppose what I will do, I will basically explicitly set a session variable employee number 1, 2, 3, 4 as 100 as of now. Okay, and this already set snowflake session variable, we will try to use inside our stored procedure with owner's right. Okay, so here we can see that this is another stored procedure with execute as owner and here in this particular select query we are trying to execute that particular session variable what we already set okay we are getting the result set we are returning so here i will execute this one and here employee number one two three four is hundred that is employee number hundred for whom that is for employee name a so we should get a as earlier right when we executed with callers right that time we got a similarly the expectation is in this case also we should get a as output because a is the name so here let's execute this particular call command and see here use of session variable is not allowed in owner's right stored procedure okay so what you understood that suppose you are configuring a session variable outside snowflake stored procedure and you are trying to access that inside snowflake stored procedure then if it is owner's right it will not work if it is caller's right then it will work and simultaneously if you are trying to configure any session variable inside stored procedure that will work in case of caller's right but it will not work in case of owner's right because in both case we saw in with owner's right stored procedure it failed okay so here is the conclusion both fail when using owner's right stored procedure even if the caller is the owner okay so here in this case whenever we executed our stored procedure that time the owner itself called that so all the caller is the owner then also it failed okay so in other cases also it will fail but in case of caller's right stored procedure both cases are perfectly passing so that is one important difference in between caller's right snowflake stored procedure and owner's right snowflake stored procedure okay right i hope the first difference is clear to you now second very important difference what i want to cover in today's discussion is with respect to viewing the definition of the stored procedure okay so for that what I will do this set one procedure which is if you observe this set one stored procedure is caller side stored procedure okay right that one I will provide access to analyst group okay which we basically created to log in with the analyst user 
and for that we created already one particular username having name data analyst right so to that particular role here we are providing the permission to use the caller's right stored procedure set one okay and then to the same role here we are providing the access to use owner's right stored procedure so if you see set four set four is owner's right stored procedure right and that one we are providing access to analyst group okay so here it is done now here what i will do i will try to log in with this data analyst user with this particular password and analyst group role okay and let's see what difference we can observe so here i will copy this particular snowflake url i will open in a new incognito window and here i will hit an enter okay now here what i will do i will copy this particular username and then here i will put that here and then here i will take the password also and here i will put here okay and here i will do a sign in so here i will switch to classic console and here i will take the username again and here i will take the password also and then here i will enter in this particular snowflake account with the data analyst role okay i will close everything so as of now we are having access to only one warehouse existing now this account that is computer wh we will choose ramu database and here we will choose public okay perfect now here both these stored procedure access we have granted this one and this one this one is caller side stored procedure this is owner side stored procedure okay now here i will copy this particular caller side stored procedure and here i will go to this particular account and here i will basically do select gate underscore dl and there you see the delivery procedure comma this one okay suppose i want to observe what is the ddl okay now this is what this is caller side stored procedure that one we are trying to access from caller that is some from some other user who is not an owner okay or from some other role who is not an owner right from those users or roles we are trying to access the definition of this particular stored procedure which is having caller right so if i execute here you can see it is returning this particular outcome okay i can paste that here so here perfectly the complete definition we are able to observe whatever actually set one having okay right now here what i will do i will try to do the same that is i will try to observe the owner right stored procedure definition okay so here instead of set one i will provide the owner side stored procedure name and i will execute get detail so when i am doing i am getting the output i will copy this one and here i will paste that see here in this case here we are not able to observe the stored procedure definition okay so this is another very important point in case of owner side stored procedure apart from owner no one can observe the definition of the procedure only the owner can view if any caller try to view they will not able to see that okay very very important point i hope you understood so with respect to session variable and with respect to viewing the definition of the stored procedure there are two major differences in between the caller's right and owner's right procedure which i explained in this video i hope you understood this all these codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section so that you can try to do some experiment with this code and if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed to now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notification of our latest videos thank you for watching